So since the last op amp video was about circuits with positive feedback, uh, this one's going to be about op amp circuits with negative feedback, uh, which seems to be a more common use case for op amps. Uh, here I have a, a common op amp circuit with negative feedback. It's called an inverting amplifier, uh, but that's not really important right now. Uh, in this video, I just want to talk about uh, how op amp circuits with negative feedback behave, uh, so that you can apply that to uh, any other op amp circuit with negative feedback. So like the last video, we can explain the behavior of this circuit in two parts. Uh, first, uh, how a change in the input will affect the output, uh, and second, how a change in the output will affect the input through the feedback. So first of all, I'm going to label the voltage at this node as a, a lowercase v with a minus subscript for the uh, voltage at the minus input. Uh, just be careful not to get that confused with minus capital V, which is one of our power supply voltages. So let's start by looking at uh, how the input voltage Vin will affect the voltage at V minus. Uh, and uh, for now, let's just ignore the output voltage V out. Uh, it should be pretty clear that as we increase V in, uh, V minus will increase, and as we decrease V in, V minus will also decrease. So from the video and comparators, we know that if the plus voltage is larger than the minus voltage, the output will be high, and if the plus voltage is smaller than the minus voltage, the output will be low. So if we lower V minus, that's going to make it smaller compared to V plus, so the output's going to go up. So there's that. As V minus goes down, V out goes up. And likewise, we can say that if uh, V minus is going up, that's going to make it uh, larger compared to V plus, which is going to make the output go down. Now when I say this, it is important to notice that uh, I'm making an assumption here. Uh, and the assumption is that we're operating in uh, what I'm calling the active region here, uh, where it sort of has this uh, linear slope to it. Uh, and we're assuming that the output is not railed at either the positive or negative supply voltage. And now, in order to find out how a change in the output will uh, affect the input, we're going to do uh, basically the same thing that we did in the uh, positive feedback video. Uh, we're going to start by saying the output will act as an ideal voltage source because it has such a low output resistance. And then we're going to say that this plus input doesn't really matter since it's not connected to anything. And then we're going to pretend the minus input isn't there. Uh, since it has such a high input resistance, it's not going to be drawing any current or giving any current out, so it's not going to affect the rest of the circuit and it doesn't matter. And then we say we're going to use superposition, uh, so since we only care about how the output voltage will affect V minus, we're just going to pretend all the other voltage sources don't exist. And what we're left with is the same thing that we had uh, in the positive feedback video, it's just a voltage divider. Uh, so we can say that as the output voltage V out goes up, the voltage at V minus will also go up. And also that uh, as the output voltage V out goes down, V minus is also going to go down. So there we have both pieces of the puzzle. We have uh, how a change in the input will affect the output, and how a change in the output will affect the input. Uh, so now we just put both of those pieces together and come up with a description uh, for the entire circuit. So let's put those two things together down here. Uh, again, here's the transfer function, which basically shows this relationship right here, uh, how a change in the input will affect the output. So let's start at a place where the uh, voltage of the minus input is going to be the same as the voltage of the plus input, uh, which puts us uh, right here at the origin. And now let's lower our input voltage, uh, which is going to lower V minus. Uh, now, uh, as we lower V minus, V plus minus V minus is going to get larger, so we're actually moving in this direction on our graph. So let's say we move out to here, and then the output voltage gets higher. Now let's apply part two. Uh, we saw that the output voltage went up, so that's going to uh, raise V minus. Now as uh, V minus goes up, V plus minus V minus is going to go down, which actually pushes us back towards the origin a little bit, which means V out is then going to go down again. Notice that this is sort of the opposite of what happened when we had uh, positive feedback. When we had positive feedback, when we gave it a nudge away from the origin, uh, it wanted to keep going in that direction and uh, just sort of fly off. Uh, but this time, whenever we give it a nudge away from the origin, the output tugs at it and tries to push it back towards the origin again. Uh, I did say earlier that saying this right here sort of assumes that we're operating in the active region. And what we just saw is that as you try to push the circuit away from the active region, the output is going to change and try to tug it back in. Uh, so this sort of validates that assumption. The circuit is going to do what it has to do to try to keep the circuit in this active region right here. At this point, I'm going to get uh, even more hand wavy, and uh, I'll just sort of tell you what happens. It doesn't necessarily try to stick at the origin, uh, but depending on the input voltage, V in, it's going to want to pick some point along the uh, active region of the transfer function and just sort of sit there. Uh, it's important to note that this is not some kind of mathematical proof. Uh, I have not proved to you that it will pick some point other than the origin and sit there. Uh, I also have not proved to you that uh, it will not overshoot and then uh, come back and overshoot again and then end up oscillating. I'll just tell you that those things don't happen. Uh, well, the oscillation might happen if you do something wrong, but that's for a later video. What's more important is getting an intuitive idea of what's going on. 
And the reason that math is not terribly important right now is because now that we know it will try to stay within this active region, uh, we can make our favorite assumption, which is that the active region is really, really small. Now again, when we say that the active region is really small, what we're saying is that this curve is really, really steep. And the reason it's really steep is because the op amp has a really high gain. So now that we can say that it's always going to be operating in this really narrow region right here, we can say that the difference between V plus and V minus is always going to be very, very small. Uh, so small, in fact, that we can essentially say that V plus is always going to be equal to V minus, uh, because uh, this difference is going to be so much smaller than the, either the input voltage or the output voltage that uh, as far as uh, those two voltages are concerned, we can basically call these two equal to each other. So now we've arrived at uh, this approximation that V plus is always going to be equal to V minus, uh, and this is what makes uh, op amp circuits with negative feedback so easy to work with. And this will be true for uh, any op amp circuit with negative feedback. Basically the output of the op amp will be whatever it needs to be to make these two voltages equal to each other. And that is what we call op amp action. So now let's find out why op amp action is so great for us. Uh, here's the original circuit, which if you remember I called an inverting amplifier. Uh, let's go through and use our uh, approximation uh, to find out exactly what the output voltage is going to be uh, given some input voltage. So first of all, let's start with our approximation, which came from op amp action, that V minus is going to be equal to V plus no matter what. And we know that V plus is equal to zero volts because that's connected directly to ground. So since we know that the output is going to be doing something to make this node right here equal to zero volts, uh, we know there's going to be a current flowing through the resistor R1, uh, which is just going to be the input voltage divided by R1. And because we know that the op amp has very high input resistance, uh, we also know that none of this current is going to be flowing into the input. Uh, all of this current has to be flowing around through this resistor. And so the output is going to be doing something to be pulling all of that current through that resistor. And since we know how much current is flowing through R2, we know what the voltage drop over R2 is going to be. Uh, and that's going to be I times R2. And so we plug in the value that we got for I, uh, which is Vn over R1, multiply that by R2, and that tells you the voltage drop over R2. So now we know that the voltage at the output must be the voltage at this node uh, minus whatever voltage drop is over R1. And we know this is going to be zero volts, so we can say the voltage at the output is going to be zero minus the voltage over R2, which is going to be uh, negative R2 over R1 times V in. So let's go ahead and plug in some resistor values to see what happens. Let's say R2, which is our feedback resistor, is uh, 20 kilo ohms, and let's say R1, which is our input resistor, is 10 kilo ohms. Uh, if you plug those in, you get uh, an output voltage that's equal to negative two times the input voltage. Uh, so now you can see why I called it an inverting amplifier earlier. The input voltage gets multiplied by a constant, which is our amplification, and it also has a negative sign in front of it, so it gets inverted. And what's really cool here is that the gain of the entire circuit does not depend at all on the op amp. You can set the gain just by setting the ratio of those two resistors, which means that as long as your op amp is close to ideal, which means uh, high input resistance, low output resistance, and very high gain, uh, you can use any op amp at all and just sort of drop it in and set the gain to whatever you want using those resistors. And that is what makes op amp circuits with negative feedback so versatile. You can do basically any kind of mathematical computation that you want uh, just by setting up these resistors around it. Uh, I'm not going to have an example circuit for this video uh, because I wanted this video to be just about uh, what negative feedback does in general. Uh, in the next video, I'll uh, talk more about this circuit specifically, and then I'll have an example of that put together. So that's it for this video. Uh, feel free to uh, leave comments or ask more questions uh, in the comment section down below.